Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, all praise be to Allah and his prayers and salutations be upon his messenger, the Prophet Muhammad uh, Today we have with us the pleasure of the company of uh, Imam Basuni. And um, as, as usual per this series, uh, we uh, will uh, start with the hadith of the Prophet wasalam, about which deeds are the best uh, for these 10 days. Um, not specifically for these 10 days, but we should be applying them uh, these 10 days and in the future, inshallah. Uh, and then we'll go into some discussion about, uh, uh, about the hadith. Um, without further ado, I'll just start. Um, so the hadith is a, a man uh, said to the Prophet wasalam, uh, which deed is most beloved to Allah? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ replied, um, al uh, The man asked, what is al murtahid And the Prophet ﷺ replied, uh, the one who recites from the beginning of the Quran to the end of it, every time he sets out on a journey. Um, so, uh, Imam Basuni, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I feel the hadith is short, but it's, it's pretty packed. Um, and, you know, I, I, First of all, what, what kind of a journey are we talking here? Uh, uh, is, is it a physical journey? Is it like a journey within the Quran, etc.? And uh, I just wanted to quickly share my uh, reflection on, on the hadith, and then we can start from there. So uh, the Prophet says, who recites from the beginning to the end, right? And, you know, this, you know, this hits home, I think, for me and maybe m m uh, many others, uh, because sometimes you get excited, you know, oh, well, I'm going to start the Quran, I'm going to start my khatma, or I'm going to, any other good deed, honestly, right? You, 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 you start, you plan on starting, a, practicing a good deed, but after a while, you know, that excitement kind, kind, of, kind of fades away, and then uh, you, you, you know, slowly digress away from it, and you might not finish, right? So I think that's, that's, that's a strong reminder uh, for some of us to, to uh, for, but the reward and the importance of uh, ending uh, what you started, finishing what you started. Um, and the second, and, and the second point, I think I, I, um, I extracted from this was the prophet said every time, right? Which means that there should be consistency uh, in terms of how, uh, in terms of how often we recite and uh, interact with the Quran, right? It shouldn't be a, a, a seasonal or you know once in a while thing. It should be continuous. It should be continuous and complete, right? And uh, finally, on a journey, right? Obviously, the, the Quran itself is a journey, right? There, Many examples, many stories. Uh, it's and Subhanallah. It's was it was the Quran is has was revealed by Allah, the Most Wise, the Most Knowledgeable. So it's it's definitely the perfect source of knowledge for anyone uh, trying to embark on a journey of knowledge. So that was kind of my 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 initial reflection about it. Uh, Imam, would you like to? Jazakumullah khairan, brother Usama, for your reflection. Mashallah, you started with a very beautiful, uh, effective, uh, uh, and inspiring reflection uh, about Hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I would like to start with the, uh, the, the question that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam received from the companion. <clears throat> the same question that we have been uh, discussing uh, in a hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the beginning of those uh, 10 uh, days of the Hijjah. Uh, what is the best deed? What is the most beloved deed to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Looks like the, uh, the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were really concerned about the relationship with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. How we can draw ourselves uh, closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, guided them not just to practice an Islam generally, but really to have a very high aim and goal to look at those deeds and actions and behaviors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, loves the most. Uh, and you see here the hadith in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is not talking actually about uh, an action, in fact, but he the, 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 the companion was asking about uh, a good deed. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directed him to another direction, which is a personality, a person, uh, the reciter of Al-Quran al, al kareem uh, This one who reads Al-Quran from the beginning with the intention of ending the recitation of Al-Quran, 
is from those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, loves. From those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors in this life and inshallah in the day of judgment. The answer of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was not, and uh, that was I was expecting when you, uh, I was reading the beginning of the hadith, that the man was asked about the most beloved deeds to Allah, and the, the, the answer would be reciting Al Quran. Okay? Or finishing the recitation of Al Quran once or twice. Uh, or reading Al Quran uh, uh, with the intention of finishing the recitation of Al Quran in one month or more or less. But our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was talking here in this hadith about a person who have this heart, a person who has this intention to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala. We call them uh, Ahl Al Quran, the people of Al Quran. Those who recite Al Quran with this intention, with this love, with this appreciation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a special status in the dunya and also on the day of judgment. Ahlul Quran, Ahlullah wa khasat. The people of Al Quran, they are the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they are the, the most uh, the most beloved people to Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who recite the, recite the, the, the revelation of Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. But this is something we need to focus on. And we ask ourselves day and, and night, are we from the people of Al-Quran? And how we can be from the people of Al-Quran? Our Prophet Muhammad sallam, in this hadith is guiding us to be from the people of Al-Quran. And also showing us one of the ways that can make all of us from the people of Al-Qur'an. Because I think the people of Al-Qur'an, uh, they are not just some people who recite Al-Qur'an once or have intention to begin the recitation of Al-Qur'an and they do not finish it. Or they recite Al-Qur'an uh, occasionally uh, during the month of Ramadan and then after the month of Ramadan, they, uh, they do not even uh, uh, bother to open Al-Mushaf or the, the, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I see this deep meaning here in Hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this uh, recommendation that let us be from the people of Al-Quran. The people of Al-Quran, they are very special to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, how can we as Muslims today, uh, how we can be from the people of Al-Quran, you have the book of Allah, have your plan, and, and try, try for your plan to be constant, not just for a specific time or a specific period or a specific situation or condition. Mm -hmm. We recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the book of Allah is our guidance in this life. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our uh, way in this life, our reference in this life. Uh, it is the link between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can live without it. We can live, we cannot live without reciting the Al-Quran and building this unique and strong connection and relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is the, 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 the first meaning, Brother Usama, I uh, can learn and get from, from the beginning of hadith and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's, it's it's very interesting, uh, Imam Basuni. Thank you for for that was that was quite. Um, I learned a lot from that. But uh, one thing that caught my attention was um, uh, when you said you can't live without it, right? Obviously, you know, there's there's a lot of people living without reciting the Quran every day in their lives, right? And you know, one might wonder, you know, what am I missing, right? And you know, that makes me think, you know, oft, oftentimes we don't know what we're missing until we try it, and. Um, this goes. Uh, this goes for especially for us. I think. I think the youth. Um, it's. It's. It's easy maybe to. It's. It's hard to understand what life without the Quran would be, without having first been with the Quran. It's. It's. I think. Personally, I. I would believe that. If I was among those very special people, um, I would see. I, I would see life differently just through the like i would see life very very much differently um this especially especially in a way that like 
I don't want to say see it through the Quran, but in a way that makes it really impossible to, to, to live without it, right? Um, because, you know, we often say that we say the Quran is our guidance. The Quran is, 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 is you know, that's we need it every time. We, we, we have to keep consistent with it, right? But I think, I think something very important for us to, 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 to realize is that we don't know what we're missing, right? And we have to try it. We have to try it. And not try it a day or two. We have to be consistent with it. And then over time, inshallah, um, Allah is very generous. Allah will hopefully Allah attaches our hearts to it, and then we can see what we're really missing, and we become attached to it. Inshallah, for the rest of our lives. Um, yes, yes, Osama, I, I see your point here, but Anna, let me uh, go back to the, uh, your first comment. Actually, that uh, some people think that still they are alive uh, and they live in this life without even. Uh, having any relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I mean, Brother Usama, the, the godly life, the life that uh, will uh, help all of us to take care of our spirituality, the life that we, we feel that we are in a connection uh, with our source of life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with our source of happiness. Maybe you are happy in this life, because you have money, you have a good position, but still, uh, if you do not read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are lacking the guidance and the directions of your creator, of your provider. The one who created all of us sent this book with specific directions and regulations. If we follow them, we'll be connected with him and we'll be more, more than successful in this life. It's not just about being successful, but more than being successful, uh, which is you feel that you are in the, in the company of Allah. You feel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is next to you, guiding you, directing you with those kind of revelations and, and, and wisdoms. And we need to build this life. As, and, and as you mentioned, we need to feel it. This life requires from us to work hard to think about who created us and be connected with him, Allah Azza wa Jal, and follow his guidance. And those guidance are just in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Without being from those who recite and reflect on the book of Allah and follow the directions of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yes, we can have uh, this nice... Uh, and good positions in this life, we can eat, we can drink, we can move, we can uh, enjoy life in general. But still, I think the enjoyment will be will not be uh, completed. That's why there is a sweetness we can gain when we recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a very special feeling we cannot gain without reading the book of Allah, believing in the book of Allah, and following the book of Allah subhanahu wa and this is the real life that we have to struggle, all of us, to gain and to experience in this life. Because this life will take us to the best of lives when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. Without building and feeling this life, the special life of the believers, the special lives of those who are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we cannot visualize al-akhirah, the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think about al-jannah, al-jannah can be seen in al-Quran al-Kareem. If, uh, if you are looking for your position before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the best of, uh, of the positions, this position can be created in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we approach the book of Allah and read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So al-Quran for us is really everything and it should be everything in our life because the happiness of our life is in the book of Allah. The happiness of Al-Akhirah, the enjoyment of Al-Akhirah, the companionship, uh, companionship of, uh, uh, of, with our Prophet and righteous people also can be uh, taken from Al-Quran and, and Al-Quran can qualify all of us to reach this level on the Day of Judgment. MashaAllah. I mean, hearing that, I, mean, I, I feel pretty motivated. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, you know, if, if I wanted to, to, to start with this, how, how would I start? Maybe like, how much should I, let's say I'm new to this and I, and I, and I, and I, and I want to start, how much, like, how much Quran should I, you know, read during the day? You know, how much time should I spend reading and not just read it fast or slow? How, 
how, how would I learn how to read it in the way that Allah uh, uh, likes? Barakallahu feek. This is uh, another good question, Brother Usama. And I, I would like to put it differently this time because I, 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 I like to talk about Al-Quran and speak about Al-Quran and also remind myself and my brothers uh, about our relationship with the Book of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. But this time I would like to, to put it in a different way. And this way we learn from Hadith in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Our Prophet is talking about a traveler who is really in a continuous effort uh, in his uh, in preparing for his or her trip in this in this life or in general and if we go back to someone who is preparing himself or herself for a trip or for a journey what do he need or uh, what does he need and what does she need actually uh, to have a successful journey and at, at, at the beginning I think no one, will embark on any trip or in any journey without having this uh, emotional preparation for the journey. I, I would be traveling, for example, tomorrow. I have to prepare myself emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually, physically for the trip, for the journey. The same should be when we approach the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like the traveler. We need to prepare ourselves emotionally, spiritually, before embarking on the Quranic journey, in our Quranic journey. And the first, by having good intention that uh, I am reading this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and by strengthening our Iman, that I am reading this book because this is part of my, of my Iman, my, my faith. I cannot be a complete Muslim or believer without believing in Al-Quran al kareem so I am reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as part of my obligations towards my religion in general and to confirm my iman, tasdiq al-iman, to confirm my belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you prepare yourself intellectually. And that, by the way, uh, if just you are preparing for a short trip, you, you need to read, to need, uh, uh, and familiarize yourself about the place that you will travel to, the place that you are planning to visit, right? And you read about the, everything about the place, familiarizing yourself about the, the other location that you will be moving to. And the same for the Quran, intellectually we need to educate ourselves about Al-Quran, familiarizing ourselves about this book, about the status of Al-Quran al kareem how we can approach Al-Quran, how we can read Al-Quran al kareem And sometimes when we go to another place and the planning for our trip, we try to uh, learn some vocabularies. If we are going to uh, travel to uh, a foreign country, for example, and uh, you try to familiarize yourself about the language of, this, of the people whom they will interact with when you travel. The same about Al-Quran al kareem familiarizing about ourselves about the language of Al-Quran how we can read Al-Quran, which we call it the Ahkam al-Tajweed, the, 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 the Tajweed rules. We have to familiarize ourselves about this if we are planning for our journey uh, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the time that you will put in order, inshallah, to finish your journey and to reach your goal <clears throat> in this journey, that should be very clear. And you have to dedicate specific time for Al-Quran al kareem Sometimes we prefer, and when we, for example, when we reserve for our ticket, some of us say, okay, I, I, I will travel, I prefer to travel after Fajr time. Some of us say, okay, I, 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 I prefer to travel after noon time. Uh, that, is, that is okay and up to you. And the same for Al Quran Kareem, which time you feel your heart is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this time should be for you to start your journey. Uh, to, to be with Al-Quran, Al-Kareem, to recite the book of Allah subhanahu uh, wa ta'ala. That should be after, can be after Fajr time, can be before you, uh, you sleep, after Isha, after Maghrib time, as you like. But still, you need to uh, dedicate specific time for the recitation of Al-Quran, Al-Kareem, as the one who is traveling and preparing for his trip as well. <clears throat> the other thing that during our trip, 
always we think about it if, if we are driving, for example, we think about the fuel uh, uh, stations and that we need to stop and get our, our nourishment and our fuel. Otherwise, we'll not finish our journey safely. And, and, and that is exactly what we need to do. We have some fuel uh, stations in Al-Quran Al-Kareem, nourishment, to nourish our heart. And every time while, while we are traveling, we have our map. And we, we, we make sure that we are following the straight path. We are following our map in order to reach our destination. And the same about the journey with Al-Quran Al-Kareem. What is our map? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always makes sure this is our ultimate goal and this is our, my final destination. Pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I have to follow the map. One surah, the second the surah, and the other thing. And if we, and while we are traveling, if we face a problem, for example, and if we feel that we are lost, we ask people. We ask people to guide us because we are lost. The same about our journey with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you read something and you do not understand it, take it back to the scholars, to, you, to our, our Muslim scholar to, or your brothers and sisters to help you to reflect on those verses and understand the meaning of those verses when you approach the book of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, this is the meaning that I think this hadith is helping us to, uh, to have this picture in our mind. When you approach the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are like a traveler and someone who loves to uh, travel from a place to another place and he's aware. And the more trips that you are embarking on, the more experience you gain. And the people will approach you asking you sometimes which place uh, you recommend for us to visit, for example. And the same for the reciters of Al-Quran. Someone might ask you, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the best surah that you feel that your heart is in it. And we, we can recommend some surahs and some ayat and, and share some reflections with, with one another. And uh, that uh, I think it's, it's happening always that when we visit a good place and we feel that it is a good experience, we share this with others. And we have our views that uh, this place is, mashallah, is the best place to visit. <clears throat> You can learn from it this and this and this. the same about the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are travel, uh, travelers in this life and we need to share our experience with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you finish your journey with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be ready for the next journey. And until, until we meet the last journey in this life, which is our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the real meaning hmm. of someone who knows that uh, his life or, or, or her life is uh, a temporary life. It's not forever. I know that uh, I, I have to finish this trip and be ready for the next trip until I, I get the final trip. And the final trip will be, uh, inshallah, uh, uh, to Al-Jannah, uh, to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to get the reward of this connection with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know if this uh, resemblance uh, is uh, makes sense or not, but this is what I feel, and I think we need to have uh, those meanings uh, while we approach the book of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Remember yourself when you are traveling and preparing for your trip. What should I, I what, 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 what do I need, and what should I prepare for my trip? What I should gain from my trip? Uh, what I should expect uh, uh, when I am on a trip? Mashallah. Uh, but uh, I'd like to recap a little bit of, of, of what we learned here. But before that, I think something you said really uh, struck me. You said the more we you embark on a journey, the more the more journeys you embark on, the more experience you have, right? And I think that's something we should we should we should all take to heart. Uh, but um, so um, you know, if, if I wanted to recap, I'd say that uh, Quran should and has to be an essential part of our lives, um, actually a necessary part of our lives, just food, just like food and water. Um, and it's, um, and we should also be very consistent with it. And that goes with a quote that I just, um, right. uh, repeated, um, and you know, like the, the way we should approach the Quran, uh, we have to be ready. Right. And, uh, being ready, you know, it, it, like 
has multiple you know, facets. First of all, we have to purify our intentions, right? You have to, you have to be emotionally ready. You have to, to, you know, to know what you, you, yeah, purify your intention, essentially. The second thing is um, you said, you know, when you, when you want to go somewhere to a place, you usually try to familiarize yourself with where you're going first, right? And I think that the, uh, the same should be for the Quran, right? You, you mentioned vocabulary, uh, you know, tajweed, uh, how you read the Quran, uh, even like learning some of the, 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 the common terms or um, uh, something else uh, you mentioned. Um, uh, yeah, so setting a specific time uh, during the day, right? And um, I, I think that's also very important, right? When we have, a, when we set a specific time, we're probably more likely to be consistent with it, right? If I specify, if I say, this time is going to be for, for Quran and, and I reserve it, I'm more likely to stick with the habit as of saying, you know, I should just do it once a day whenever I feel like it. And, uh, and I think you mentioned, but it should be a time where you feel like doing it. You know, for some people you said, you know, they feel like doing it after Fajr. For some people, they feel like in the mood before Asa, whatever, you know, time feels good for you. But, you know, a specific time during, for, uh, during the day. And I think uh, the, the, the last point um, was... The fuel is very important. The nourishment and the fuel that we have to expect uh, on our journey. Right. Yeah. Uh, taking breaks and uh, stopping when, when one needs to. Yeah. And, and, and gaining the reflections and the, uh, the nourishment from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am not just... Uh, uh, reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to enjoy the recitation, but to find the guidance and to be guided with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to ask ourselves always after each uh, recitation that we perform every day, what is the practical takeaway from, from my recitation? What should I do? Uh, and also delivering the message to others after they sharing your reflection and experience of your journey with your brothers and sisters those will make our journey with, uh, with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very distinguished and profound. And this is what we are looking for, Brother Usama, to, yeah. for our Quran, to love our Quran, to have a companionship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our life. So we can have this unique life that we were talking about at the beginning of this session. Yeah, yeah. I, I think personally what struck for me is setting a specific time. That's something I want to try to work on. Good. Uh, Excellent. Mashallah. Very good. I hope I hope we all got we all at least got one thing that we you know we're gonna apply this. Uh, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan Dr. Basuni. I learned a lot and that was, was such a pleasure. Thank uh, you, Islam Barakallah. May Allah accept it from all of us. May Allah accept it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.